So hello and welcome back to Books and Things. Today, welcome to another episode of Non-Linear Books. So I will link down below my previous episodes of Non-Linear Books. Basically, in this series I talk about books that do not take a normal chronological linear structure and that do something else with their narrative structure. Previously I've done a video on books that are series of interconnected short stories, I've done one on books with multiple narrators, I've done one on books with dual narratives. Today I'm going to be talking about books that are non-chronological, so books that do interesting things with time. Some of the books I have spoken about in non-linear books previously also do interesting things with time, especially books that have dual narratives. The dual narratives often tend to be going on on different timelines, though that can vary. But today I thought I'd take the time to talk specifically about some books that I think do really interesting things with time within their structure. Let's talk about some non-linear books. So I'm going to start off with a book that does kind of fairly straightforward things in terms of messing around with time, and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This was one of my favourite books of last year. I absolutely loved it, devoured it, I thought it was absolutely incredible. I've got another book by her called The Lola Quartet, which I'm hoping to read this month, and this, this book was just incredible. It is so good. Basically, Station Eleven is an apocalyptic novel in which an epidemic wipes out like 90% of the human population, and it's about what happens before this natural disaster and also what happens afterwards, and it follows in part uh, travelling group of actors 20 years after the vast majority of the human population has been wiped out. What I really love about this book is that it's not about the end of the world, it's about people in the end of the world. That is what I love about it. And I also really like what it does with time and structure because we have quite a lot of narratives going on in this book. It's not quite a dual narrative because there are so many characters and so many timelines that we follow, but we see before the epidemic, we see after the epidemic, and we do see some of what's going on in between. But to be honest, most of what we get is the before and after, which I really like because we see the effects and we see this contrasted with the kind of ordinary lives of these people beforehand and their kind of concerns and how that differs to the concerns they have later and also the ways in which it doesn't because a lot of this book is about human relationships and the way people interact with each other that's one of the reasons why I really like it because it's just about people and that that is what I like in books it is so good and I do really like what this book does with time and the way it jumps between the before and after the way we get to see all these different lives and often we are seeing people in the past in the kind of before the apocalypse narrative that we know are dead later but we kind of get to see them interact with other characters that we do know do survive and so on. I mean Station Eleven is quite a short book but we get to know so many characters so well and I think having these multiple timelines does really help that and the way they kind of all weave together and we get these various climaxes throughout the book at different times I think that works really well and it's very effective. It also makes it the book have a feel at some points almost like a scrapbook like we're piecing together the puzzle of what has happened over these 20 years and getting to see all these different pieces and I really like like the way that the kind of present day after the apocalypse contrast to the previous things and how they kind of tie together. I think it just is done very well and it is overall a rather brilliant book. Next I want to talk about a flashback novel. I am a big fan of a flashback novel. I do enjoy novels that start and then we get the kind of what is going on in the present but we also get someone looking back on their lives and their memories coming forward because I find memory a really interesting theme especially when it deals with sort of the unreliability of memory and that kind of thing and I think that can be really really cool. So I wanted to talk about Remains of the Day by Kazuya Shiguro which is probably one of my favourite books of all time present day of this book it is the 1950s and there's a man called Stevens and he is a butler and his employer gives him a few days off so he decides to go and find out this woman who he used to work with in order to try and employ her again and as he travels across England to see her he also travels kind of back into his past in his memory and all these memories come out not necessarily in the order that they happened but in a kind of slightly muddled complicated order where at times the things he remembers aren't quite exactly as they happened his memory is very unreliable but basically he is remembering what happened in the 1920s and 30s before the Second World War. He is remembering both his relationship with the housekeeper, this woman he, he is going to see, and he is also remembering his relationship with his employer, Lord Darlington. As Lord Darlington, it sort of becomes revealed, was trying to work with certain people in Germany before the Second World War to make sure that another war didn't happen and this creates a very kind of complicated atmosphere and just quite a complicated book and I love the way that this book is told both in the present day while Stevens is driving across England and also as he is driving across England he is delving deeper into his past and into his memories and I love the way that that is dealt with and the way the flashback operates in this book I think it's such an interesting interestingly done book and the structure is just great it's just great anyway next I want to talk about Life After Life by Kay Atkins and this is another one of my favourite books of all time. It is so good. I read this like two years ago now, maybe not quite, but it's just brilliant. The premise of Life After Life is that it's about this girl, Ursula, and every time Ursula dies, she gets reborn and she gets to live her life over again. So 
And then this book begins, she dies on the first page, and then she's reborn, and then she lives a little bit longer, and then she dies, and then she's reborn, she lives a little bit longer. And every time she lives her life, it's a little bit different, and there is some bit of her that instinctively remembers certain things so that she knows to avoid certain situations. Every one of her lives is different. But we don't get to follow her all the way through all of her lives, so we'll start a life and we'll see the beginning of her life, and then we'll see another bit of her life, and then a much later bit. Or we'll just pop into one of her lives in like 1940 when she's been alive 30 years already and then we'll jump to another bit of her life in a different life and it just it's a very like odd structure and at times it can be a bit bewildering but I find it absolutely fascinating because when we get to see all these kind of different portraits of the Britain in the first half of the 20th century which is a period I'm fascinated in historically but also we get this kind of odd structure where we see Ursula in all her different lives and it does sort of interesting things with with time and the way it operates it's just it's just a fascinating fascinatingly structured book and I found it so gripping like this is a big book and I, I devoured it when I read it because it is such an engaging thoroughly like emotional and brilliant book and finally I want to talk about another book that does interesting things with the possibilities of life and time and that is The Virgins of Us by Laura Barnett. I don't have a physical copy of this book because I read on Kindle but I really think I should get one because I do really love it and I thought it was fascinating. So basically The Virgins of Us begins with two people meeting and then it begins again with the two people passing each other by and not meeting and then it begins again with the two people meeting but in a slightly different way and basically it follows these three different strands of how these two people's lives could have been and it just follows these three completely different lives throughout the book and we get to see the similarities between the lives and the differences they meet different people in each life and their lives just go a different way and we get to see these three possible futures of these people kind of extending from the first scene of the novel and I think that is done very very well I really do enjoy that I think it's a, a fascinating lovely structure to have and the book is very emotionally engaging very powerful at Time is very sad, like none of the three lives they lead are incredibly happy. One of the things I really like about The Virgins of Us that I think is done so brilliantly is that although the two central characters are, you know, they exist in each of the three stories, they are different in each of the three stories because their memories and their experiences affect them. So the person that Jim becomes in one story is not the person that Jim becomes in another and I really like that. I thought it was done really cleverly and is a really like nice touch to the book. I think it's a brilliant book with a fascinating structure and does really interesting things with time and possibility and this idea of like what your life might have been with one different turning point and how that would have affected it which is really cool. Anyway, so that is all I wanted to talk about today in this episode of Nonlinear Books. Please let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And please let me know what is your favourite book that does interesting things with chronology and time. I'll be back very soon with another video and in the meantime, happy reading.